Florence, Italy, the jewel of the Renaissance. This city is a sea of tourists lining up to catch the sight of the Duomo or the beheading of Medusa. Its uneven stone streets overflowing with prosciutto and cheese served alongside spritzes and negronis. But if you look past the crowds, you'll see the true face of Florence as a city that was founded by artisans. Florence was the first European city I ever visited. The Ferrari of espresso machines, La Marzocco, brought me here. So it's only fitting that I'm back in town to meet up with La Marzocco's own artisan and head designer, Stefano Della Pietra. I have to admit, my time with Stefano is a bit selfish as well. If you cut me open, all you find is mezcal and espresso. And no one knows espresso better than La Marzocco. The La Marzocco machine works like a musical instrument, turning the barista into a musician and a shot into a symphony. They're built for baristas looking to use the best tools of the trade. I can hear the crowds of tourists lining up outside of the Uffizi, but the sound of the steam one is just a little bit louder. Sorry, Carvaggio. My search for great espresso starts at La Marzocco's cultural hub and museum, Academia del Café Espresso. Think of it as Florence's very own Willy Wonka factory, or in my own mind, the gates of heaven. So welcome to Academia. It's beautiful. It was like from 1959 was yeah. built, so... So this was the factory yeah. of La Marzocco. This is where the whole production of, of La Marzocco was made, so from 1960 to 2009. Okay. Uh, we are going down to the workshop that is called Officine Fratelli Bambi. Which means what? Is the name of La Marzocco before it was La Marzocco. Literally is the workshop of Bambi's brothers. The Bambi brothers. In 1927, Giuseppe and Bruno Bambi founded Officine Fratelli Bambi and produced their first espresso machine. It was called La Marzocco. Beneath the main floor of Academia, Stefano is going back to the past and honoring the work of the brothers with La Marzocco's bespoke design studio, Officine Fratelli Bambi. In the workshop, Stefano is designing custom machines that are realized by traditional handcrafting techniques and pushing the forefront of design with new technology like 3D stainless steel printing. At Officine, he works to honor heritage while continuing to innovate. The, the Bambis at the beginning were uh, panel beaters, so it means that they were uh, beating metals for different industries. So when you say panel beating, what, what is, just like show me, what does that mean? What does that look like? Yeah, I want to try it. <laughs> this is like therapy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like if, if you have to like let out like a, a lot of anger, a lot yeah. of your problems, you know? It's no work. The idea of the design of La Marzocco is to give to, to the baristas a classic shape so that they don't want to change it in two or three years. Creating a shape for a new production with traditional uh, tools let us know that we will keep being always true to our roots. Stefano, I want to thank you for for the present. Very appreciate it. <laughs> I'll find a way to take this back you, to You have LA. to send us your CV, so yeah. <laughs> we are not going to pay you for a few and it's fine. I will hammer my way <laughs> to this, this machine. <laughs> ah, la dolce vita. Time in Italy moves a bit slower, until it comes to their cars. Italians have had an automotive love affair for over a century, so when Stefano invites me to his hometown of Prato, he has a surprise waiting for me. Ciao wow, Stefano, how are you? I think it's time for a coffee. Yes. In this? We are in Italy, why not? <laughs> of course, let's do it. This one is a bunch of India Coupe from 1972. It's quite a classic for Italian cars. Uh -huh. It was uh, quite an important car. This car was used for rallies. Like, it was or, a racing car? Yeah, this one was a racing car and that won a lot of uh, trophies in rallies. What I like is that it has a shape that is designed for being beautiful, yeah. but it's also functional because you can feel it's super low. I mean, so much of like the little details that I'm seeing in this car 
I see in Lamar's Oka machines? So, for sure, what we try to tell the Lamar Zoko interfaces is that we are mechanical, that every button that you have to press is not too soft. Everything has to give you that heavy duty feedback. What's the connection that Italians have with cars? There's a lot of passion about cars and bikes. Yeah. Speed in general is really part of our tradition. Speed. Yeah, I think yes. Lamarzoko has come a long way since the Bombi brothers built their first machine. Today, you can find Lamarzokos in cafes and homes around the globe, including mine. But my time with Stefano has taught me that Lamarzoko machines are about more than just the coffee they make. Now I can see the curves of a car in the design and the influence of Renaissance art. And it's all on display at Academia. My time there with Stefano has shown me the ways that tradition can be honored through innovation. As I sit in a cafe, I can feel the heartbeat of the city, or maybe it's just the caffeine. These streets have seen whole lives play out in front of them, and I wonder what secrets they hold. But that's a question for another day. For now, I think I'll just have another espresso to cure this jet lag.